Tis their right, sit down and cry my fill, till every tear I turn the mill. It's good day to my morning song. Stephanie Dardis. I was born Stephanie Pollard and my relative is my father Stephen Pollard. Say what is nice. I was named after my dad. Okay. And uh, two of his granddaughters are named after him. They have Stephanie in their name as well mm -hmm. and um, my son is Connor. Second name is Connor Stephen. So there's five Stephanies and Stephens okay. in the generations. Well I'm 72. I was born on the 9th of April 1943 and my father was 50 when I was born mm. so there's quite and he died when I was 18 and he was 68 and I have two brothers one is um, 81 and the other one is 83 so they're quite a bit older than me or I imagine like so many men at that time, there was no work around and they joined the army to have a wage. Mm. Um, and I imagine that that was his reason for being in the army. No problem. Yeah, no, he used his, his British army skills to train the, the volunteers at the four courts. He trained his comrades in musketry mm. and the skills that he had learned as a soldier. I, I imagine it was a social conscience, it was looking at life as it was in Ireland in those days, there was huge dep deprivation and poverty, especially around the area where he, he lived, excuse me, around Dominic Street, there was a lot of tenements, there was a lot of poverty, and of course World War I was on, so it was an opportunity where the British would be otherwise occupied. Before the Rising, had you been in the British Army? Yes. When did you desert? I joined the Army in nine, February 1915, and I deserted at the end of that year, but I cannot give the exact date. When I deserted, I brought a Lee Enfield rifle with me. He was asked, did you desert for the purpose of rejoining the volunteers? He replied, yes. He was asked, you had been in the volunteers before you joined? He replied, yes, and I could not afford to buy a gun, and that was my way of getting it. He was asked, did you make contact with your company when you came out? He said, yes, I rejoined C Company. He was at the Four Courts garrison. Hmm. And what happened there? Well, he was there with his brother, who was Lieutenant Frank Pollard, and his sister-in-law, Louisa, who was um, married to Frank. And um, oh. um, C Company, 1st Battalion of the Dublin Brigade at the Four Courts. And they were involved as well with barricading uh, Church Street Bridge. I mobilised in Parnell Square, and after the demobilisation, I went to the Hibernia Hall, 28th North Frederick Street. On Easter Monday what happened? I went to Black Hole Place and paraded with C Company at 12 o'clock. I was posted to the barricade in Church Street under Padder Clancy and I was with him all the week until the surrender. At the surrender then my father was advised by his comrades to escape because he had deserted the British Army with his rifle and he would have been shot as a deserter. 
so they advised him to get away, which he fortunately did. He was asked, when was that? On Easter evening of that week. Were you deported? No, I escaped on that evening. You did not surrender? No. In company with Joe McDonough, I escaped up Dorset Street, and when we got as far as the potato market on Saturday night, I remained there until Sunday morning, and we took refuge in some house where the people were friendly. I reached home after midday on the following day. Shortly after things settled down, I got a job in the munitions factory in Parkgate Street under the assumed name of Tom Stevens. I was arrested by a major price and I was sent to the castle where I was kept for three days. I was court-martialed at Red March Camp in Sheffield. He was sent to Derby Prison. And from Derby Prison he was sent to Blackpool under what they called open arrest. And the reason for this was, the reason he wasn't shot probably um, as a deserter was because they were rounding up the deserters to send them to the trenches of France. My detention in a military pris prison was due to the fact I was a deserter from the British Army and the Enfield rifle I used during Easter week was stolen from the British Army. I was continuously on the run from the time of my release from Derby Prison to the Armistice in November 1918 when an amnesty was granted to all deserters. So he, he, uh, he escaped again and got back to Dublin, I guess on a cargo ship. Sure. They had their musketry practice in Tara Street, sometimes in the open street, and on Sunday morning they had a rifle firing practice and revolver firing, and they had a training centre out in Finglas. The area where all the officers of the Dublin Brigade met happened to be covered by E Company, that was Parnell Square, and almost every Saturday night I was on duty there on arms patrol. And in 1920, um, they, they raided the AOH hall in Parnell Square and got six or seven rifles and some equipment. It was an armed raid. Yeah. And one of the things that struck me, he had lovely handwriting for yeah. somebody who left school at 14. Right. And yeah. one of the first things I did when I saw this was I just traced my hand over his handwriting. Oh, really? Know, because it just made me feel close to him, you know? Oh, he was wonderful he was loving and kind and humble and we were best friends we went everywhere together when i was a child because of there's such a big age gap between my two brothers and i i was virtually like an only child mm. and we were he took me everywhere taught me how to ride my bike how to swim all the things dads do yeah lovely warm decent human being well one of the most wonderful things about him was there wasn't an ounce of prejudice in that man. Despite having gone through what he went through, uh, being imprisoned and at very hard times, um, he hadn't an ounce of prejudice against the English or anyone else on earth. He was a very open, loving man and I think that's a great benchmark for any father to, to be and, and to pass to pass that on to his his children without even saying what he was doing just to have that that openness and non-prejudicial quality about him I think it was wonderful so what are your views on 2016 2016 is I, I think it's a a major commemoration of 1916 and it's great that 
so we're still here because really it's not about us, it's about the men and women who fought that battle for, on our behalf. And really we're, we're the bridge between the generations. Um, I think it will be wonderful in another 50 years time for our future generations of our families and of the nation to look back and review the situation and, and the change it brought about for our nation. Why were they so driven and they got the strength to do what they did, really taking on the British Empire, a, a, a small group of men in, in the con from all parts of the country and women from all parts of the country. I think it was a very courageous act and it was, it, it planted the seeds of change I think in Ireland which was needed. You know, it's, it's something worth always remembering. I wish I were on yonder hill Tis there I'd sit down and cry my fill Till every tear would turn a mill It's good day to my morning song Shoo. Die.